As you guys know, uh, Warner Brothers recently announced this tectonic shift in the whole movie theatrical experience universe when they came out and announced that they were not just moving Wonder Woman 84 on a direct to HBO Max day and date release, but they were going to do the same for every film they have coming out in 2021 for a grand total of 17 projects, Rob, 17 movies they have that they were going to go and just put directly on HBO Max. Now, in companion videos this weekend, somebody asked a really good question. And they asked, how does this affect <clears throat> actors like, say, a Robert Downey Jr., for example, who have deals in their contracts for percentage of the box office take? For example, the Robert Downey Jr. was a great example because he very famously made the vast majority of his money on the MCU off of back-end deals. Yeah, I'll be in the movie for X number of millions of dollars, but I also get X percentage of the box office revenue, and that's where he made his real money. Christopher Nolan, Rob, recently was really oh, in the most. Oh, yes. Was it 20% or something like that? Yeah, of, of the gross. Of the gross for Tenet. I mean, that was just ridiculous. So the question came in, what is Warner Brothers going to do with deals like that? Now, I didn't know the answer, but I said what I what I'm guessing they probably did was before making the announcement, they probably went to whatever parties had those types of deals. And Rob, those deals aren't common. They're right. they're not unusual, but they're not. It's not like every actor in a movie gets these these back end point deals. And we've seen in recent years studios kind of back away from offering those types of deals, but they are still offered, and there are some who still have that deal. So what I said was my guess of what they probably did was went to the to the interested parties, the people who have those deals in their contracts and say, look, we're going to move this thing straight to HBO. Let's negotiate here for us to buy that clause out of your contract. We'll give you like a, a million extra dollars right now to take that back end points deal out because we're going straight to HBO. That's why I said at the time. Well, it's not just the actors who have vested interest or even the writers who have vested interest. There's a story coming out today from Deadline that is suggesting that they are hearing that Legendary Pictures, the company, Rob, that financed like 75% of Dune's budget and finan financed like 75% of Godzilla versus Kong's budget. <clears throat> and they quite famously also financed a lot of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight things. They're a big company. They're saying that Legendary is, number one, not happy with this move that HBO is doing, that Warner Brothers is doing, moving these films to HBO. But they weren't even notified. This, this article in Deadline is suggesting that Legendary wasn't even notified that Warner Brothers was going to be making this move. This comes to us um, in, the, uh, in the article here. It says this. I'm hearing that Legendary Entertainment has has or will send legal letters to Warner Brothers as soon as today, challenging the decision to put the Denis Villeneuve directed Dune on to, into the HBO Max deal and maybe Godzilla vs. Kong as well. On the latter, Legendary reported reportedly had Netflix ready to pull the film from Warner Brothers for around $250 million before Warner Media blocked it. Its sources said Legendary had no advance notice before last week's announcement that both Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong were being part of the HBO Max plan. Legendary certainly seems to have the right to challenge Warner Media on its decision. Legendary and its partners has provided 75% of the 160 65 million or so net budget of Dune and an evil news directed adaptation of the Frank Herbert novel that was envisioned to be the first of multiple films exploiting the six novel series. It was put up a small amount and put up a similar amount, I should say, of the funding on Godzilla vs. on the Godzilla versus Kong film. Will the long term viability of the franchises be tarnished by starting out as an HBO Max offering? That is a great question. If you start Dune as a streamer movie, how does that affect its potential long-term viability? That's a question that, that uh, Legendary is asking right now. Uh, this, Rob, is really interesting because while we knew, and I assume there would be some issues with actors and directors working on points and stuff like that, I didn't take into consideration the fact, what about these production partners? Legendary Pictures didn't put up 75%, like over $100 million to make Dune for it to go to HBO Max. They didn't do that. That's not why Legendary put up all that money. 
And they, as well as some other players in Hollywood right now, are accusing Warner Brothers of using them just to promote their new home streaming service. And they may have a point. They may have a very, very valid point, as a matter of fact, on that end. Now, let's for a second talk about, well, how how is Warner Brothers going to be dealing with these actors? You know, Gal, Gal Gadot, Rob, ha- did have some back-end points deals on Wonder Woman 84. you got to assume one or two of the big-name actors in Dune probably had that as well. How is Warner Brothers going to deal with that part of it? Let's jump into the Campia classroom for a second. So they're handling this in two different ways. The one way is a way they dealt with Wonder Woman 84 and the new Anne Hathaway movie, The Witches. And then they're handling these 17 films coming out in 2021 completely differently. For Wonder Woman 84 and The Witches, Wonder Woman was given a calculation of a $1 billion box office. So what Warner Brothers said to all the parties involved with Wonder Woman 84 is, we think it's reasonable to make a guess that Wonder Woman 84 was going to make a billion dollars. So what they did for the players involved with Wonder Woman 84 was say, look, we will calculate your bonuses and your revenue based on Wonder Woman 84 making a billion dollars at the box office. That left everybody happy, right? It's like, okay, yeah, that's fair. I mean, maybe it would have made a little bit more at the box office, but maybe it would have made a little bit less. So a billion dollars is good. So now anybody who is standing to make bonuses on Wonder Woman 84 in the theaters will get those bonuses based on Wonder Woman's assumption of making a billion dollars. They did the same with the witches, although obviously they didn't assume the witches was going to make a billion dollars. But that's what they did with that. Everybody's happy. However, they are approaching it in a completely different way for all of these new 17 movies coming out in 2021. Warner Brothers is still considering these films theatrical releases. Even though all these movies are going to be going on HBO Max the day they're released, Warner Brothers is still classifying all the movies coming out in 2021 as theatrical releases. Now, here's what they're going to do instead. This is a lot of numbers, but it's actually quite important, so follow along with me here. Let's say an actor had a bonus that would kick in at $300 million. Like, if this movie hits $300 million at the box office, this bonus kicks in with you. What they are going to do is Warner Brothers will say, whatever bonus threshold that was at, like, say, $300 million, we're going to cut it in half. So, Rob, if you made a movie called revenge of the chicken people for whatever reason how'd you know i have that in active development Uh, i'm sorry i forgot i forgot i signed an nda about that i wasn't supposed to say anything i'm sorry so rob is making a movie called revenge of the chicken people and i'm the studio so i tell rob i'll tell you what rob uh, as the director if this movie hits 300 million dollars at the box office you get a two million dollar bonus right if this movie hits 300 million at the box office you oh it will it will (laughs) and it will you will get a two million dollar bonus well here's the thing ain't no way in hell revenge of the chicken people is going to hit 300 million dollars at the box office when it gets released on hbo max on the same day so what hbo (laughs) what leaving you pissed so what hbo is saying now is like i'll tell you what we will cut that number in half so now to get that two million dollar bonus All Revenge of the Chicken People has to make in the theaters is half of that. It's only $150 million now. On top of that, on top of that, HBO will count 50% of whatever box office it does make and call that HBO Max's licensing fee and will apply that to the total of the overall bonus threshold. Does that sound confusing? Okay, let's put it this way. Let's say uh, Revenge of the Chicken People, okay? It makes a Rob needed $300 million, uh, to hit bonus, right? Rob needed that film in his contract to hit $300 million for him to get his $2 million bonus. Under the new rules, now it only has to hit $150 million. So let's say Revenge of the Chicken People comes out in theaters, and only makes uh, 100 million. Revenge oh, of the Chicken. <laughs> it makes 100 million at the box office. But all is not lost for Rob's bonus because now HBO is saying uh, they will take 50% of whatever it makes at the box office. So 50% of 100 million uh, is indeed 50 more million dollars. 
and we'll apply that as an HBO licensing fee to it. So the threshold number, uh, number of 150 million is now hit, uh, hit, and Rob gets his bonus because of that. Now, that's a lot of math and that's a lot of calculation, but that's the way HBO is going to kind of be looking at this, how Warner Brothers is going to look at it and calculate those deals. But Rob, while it sounds really convoluted and complicated, and in a way it is, it's important to understand that really Warner Brothers only has to worry about this for the next year. Because after 2021, they're just going to make sure they write all their contracts where people understand, <laughs> there ain't no box office, kids. <laughs> it's all HBO Max. So this is only a temporary problem they have to deal with at the moment. And, you know, what they do in 2022 will open up a whole new bag of worms. But for now, it's just a temporary problem. But, Rob, this legendary thing could be an issue. Well, I was going to say, I mean, uh, you know, when you finance 75% of a film's production budget, and suddenly your 75% investment is now beholden to the whims of AT&T and, and, and Warner's upper management, and you haven't been consulted, I would say that's not very good business. Uh, Legendary would expect to be a pretty big partner on all decisions that are made. And by the way, Legendary has been financing movies for Warner Brothers for the better part of going on two decades now, more than, more than 15 years. And they're on the lot, or they, at least they used to be, and they're a, they're a big part of what Warner has been doing. And the idea that they weren't consulted or they weren't brought in is, a, I think, a massive blunder on the – although I don't really know. I've reached out to a few people to ask about this kind of thing, and I just don't understand how something like that would happen, how you don't involve your investors who are that, how, who are that vested in your project. Right now, I'm going to let everybody, I'm a little inside baseball here, Rob, but I'm going to let everybody know a little bit. Rob has a certain, I won't give away specific percentages or anything, but Rob has a certain stake in, because he helped me. Rob has a certain stake in my movie, Movie Trailers, A Love Story, right? You don't get, you don't get what you deserve, John. You get what you negotiate. You get what you negotiate. Now, it's nowhere near the investment of, say, legendary into, say, Dune, but he has he has a certain uh, uh, interest in it. And Rob, I think you can testify to this. Whenever I was facing certain decisions about what to do with the movie, one of the first things I would do is get on the phone with you. You, and, and, you actually did that. Because Rob has a – it doesn't matter how big or small it is. Rob has an interest in it, and I felt it was only fair – that if I've got to make a decision about where to distribute it and who's going to do what and blah blah blah, I figured it's only fair to at least consult with Rob because he has a he has a, a to be honest, invested John, interest. I've worked in this business for thirty years, and you were the most transparent, upfront person in terms of of that that I have ever worked with. You should you should see the studio accounting I get back still on Agent <laughs> Cody Banks. Wow, <laughs> wow. So wow. I mean. But it, Rob, it really does. It it is kind of like when I, who was it that pulled a movie? Was it Universal? I can't remember. Yeah, it was Universal when Universal decided they were going to pull their troll sequel from theaters? Like they blindsided the theaters. The theaters are their theatrical partners, and they said you didn't even talk to us before doing that. We found out from the news that yeah. you did this. Right? It is kind of surprising to me, Rob, when you especially when you consider the long term and deep relationship between legendary and uh and warner brothers that warner brothers would do something like this and 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 that legendary didn't know that they were going to announce that they're moving all their 2021 films to hbo max that's the part that surprises me most what would warner brothers motivation be for not having a discussion with legendary about this uh, i honestly i don't know i i i mean to me it, it, you're in partnership with Legendary. It's a partnership that's lasted for a, at least a decade and a half. I mean, when I was working on Superman Returns in 2005, I met like Thomas Tull and the, the guys at Legendary, John Jashney, those guys. I liked them. <laughs> they, <laughs> like, why wouldn't you want to be chummy with the people that are bringing you all that cash to make your projects? I, I honestly don't understand. And I think perhaps, you know, I would chalk it up to the fact that AT&T, look, 
maybe this was an emergency thing. This was a this was a sweeping decision that they made. They didn't just make it for a few of their films for half the year. They went in for the entire fiscal 2021 year, I guess, and beyond if you take it all the way into December. I mean, it's that's a huge decision. And I, I would think that you would want to consult with Legendary specifically because of things like Dune. You know, they've planned to do three films when it comes to uh, Paul Atreides. They were going to do, from what I understand, they were going to do Dune, Dune Prophet, and Dune Messiah that would close out the Paul Atreides story. It was to be the Paul Atreides trilogy. And, and how, if that was the plan... You're in the middle of a business deal. You, 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 it's not just this one-off. You're planning TV shows, and you're planning. I, I don't get it, man. I don't get it. Yeah, it's quite. I, I've got to assume, maybe naively, I have to assume there's more to this story than we're being told. That at some level, some back-channel communication had to have happened. But it's going to be really interesting to see how something like this, if it could disrupt hbo's max's plans like could we end up in a situation where a judge says nah you can't put dune or godzilla versus kong on hbo max and that kind of messes up their plans i don't could could you see something like that happening rob could this go to a court and have a court say yeah you can't release these ones on hbo max what do you think john as we are live on the air i just received a an email from an industry person that i trust implicitly uh, and that person wrote back, Warner Brothers believes that they control the dist distribution rights to Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong, where they can unilaterally decide on the release plan. Legendary only had approval rights to and changes with the release date. So they're pretty much screwed because from Warner Brothers' perspective, they are honoring their obligation for a theatrical release. Part of the reason why Warner Brothers treated Legendary that way was because of the way Legendary treated Warner Brothers when initially Warner Brothers wanted to move Tenant to Christmas and Legendary blocked it, saying they would not move Dune to another date. Nolan had a clause in his contract that no other WB movie would be released in the same six-week period. And when Legendary refused to move Dune, Warner Brothers had to release Tenant when they did or wait until 2021. Um, and apparently Warner Brothers execs were pissed off at Legendary for not being good partners then. I mean, that, it's not surprising because as the distributor, the distributor gets to decide where a film and how a film is presented. There's no doubt about that. But isn't it bad faith? Like, obviously, Legendary went into investing a hundred plus million dollars in this movie, Dune. Let, well, let's just keep it to talking about Dune. With the Ex expectation that this was a movie that was going to hit theaters, maybe make six hundred million dollars uh, on on the theaters, maybe more. Who knows? Launch a trilogy and all that kind of stuff. So while Warner Brothers certainly has the right to do that, having the right to do something and being right doing it are often two different things. Wasn't this? A, isn't this kind of an act of bad faith on Warner Brothers' part? I, I mean, I think so. First of all. We're in the, the 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 movie distribution and exhibition business is 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 a smoking ruin right now. It's it's like Dresden after the bombing, or it's out London after the Blitz. And what you need is all hands on deck, working. I would think together, figuring this stuff out and making these kinds of moves and throwing around. Well, we have distribution rights, and you shouldn't. Uh, and working with people like Christopher Nolan or Denis Villeneuve. Why wouldn't you all want to get together in a room and hash this thing out to make unilateral decisions or be mad at somebody for holding up release dates? I mean, again, John, I go back to Bob Sugar from the great Jerry <laughs> Maguire. It ain't show friends. It's show business. And this is not, to me, good business. And I, I especially with Warner Brothers having a long term finance partner like a legendary who's actually bringing in the, the cheddar to make your product. It's uh, it's a crazy situation. It's and I'm sure we're going to find out more. And I'm sure there's going to be other legal challenges as well. This is 17 movies we're talking about right now. We're only talking about two of them in Dune and Godzilla versus Kong. Question here is, guys, what do you think about this? This throws an interesting wrench into the works. Do you think this could have big Im implications? Do you think this will really be much ado about nothing, which is very possible? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys.